I'd like to share a testimony, um, something that I haven't shared before. And I would like to ask the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to share the words that are out of my mouth. They're not my words, but the Holy Spirit. And of course, sharing my testimony is about the glory of God and glorifying God and giving it all to God. Part of my testimony is that I have seen what I believe to be God. It may be a um, manifestation um, and it also is, for instance, the apprehension of saying that he saw him. Um, for instance, Moses knew no, of any other ancient prophet that had possessed God's invisible. No human eyes have seen him. But Christ had knowledge of God which might be expressed to our apprehension by saying that he saw him. He knew intimately and completely and was therefore fitted to make a full manifestation of him. John 5.37, John 6.46, 1 John 4.12 and Exodus 33 and 20 and John 14 and 9. This passage is not meant to deny that man had witnessed manifestations of God and, has, ha, and as when he appeared to Moses the prophet. Numbers 12.8, Isaiah 6, 1 and 13. But is meant that no one has seen the essence of God or has fully known God. The prophets delivered what they heard God speak, Jesus, what he knew of God as his equal and as understanding of the full, fully nature. Just reading from Barnes' notes of the Bible. So basically, I am looking at the fact of sharing you with a testimony that through his only son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for you and I. I had drifted away from God. I've done this many times in my life. But God warns us very clearly that we must show obedience to God, to obey his commands, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. At one stage that I had done something silly and I had died. It was no longer in this world. And I had done what I had done. And this is very important that we do listen to the Holy Spirit. We do listen to God. We put on the armor of God every day. We pray to God, not only just praying out loud, but praying in our minds and praying in our soul and our minds and our bodies. Praying to God every day. Listening to the Holy Spirit is much important. But I was able to see this apprehension of God. I was able to see God in in a way that was so awesome and so out of this world and I knew it was God. I died and I could have been dead in an ambulance for more than 15 minutes or more. And I was rushed to the hospital for doing something that I should not have done. See, people are hurting out there. There is pain and suffering. And the Lord Jesus Christ tells his followers, his sheep, that we need to go out into the world and bring people to Christ. Show compassion and love and kindness and understanding and encouraging people. Encouraging people and lifting people up. But I had done something very silly. So I had died and I went to a place. And the apprehension or the, or the being that I saw, I believed it to be God. It was God. Because it had paused, it had turned towards this bright light, this brightest light, brighter than the sun. It was so pierce-brighting 
that when you looked into it, the light penetrated through your eyes to the back of your head and through the other side. It was so strong and so powerful. Just as Moses argued to God, just as Moses pleaded to God, so did I. But God said that I have to send you back to this earth. I have to send you back. And I said to God, well, look at the people down on that earth. Who would want to go back to this earth? So in the voice of God that I heard, God said to me that you will go back as an angel of injustice and that wherever you go and whatever you do, you will see injustices. But it is not your place to judge. It's not your place to do anything but to do the will of God and to do what God has commanded you to do. So whether this took five minutes, whether this took ten minutes, whether this took twenty years, I don't know. But I do remember very clearly this so awe-inspiring bright light and God was like this mist, this cloud mist. It was just a wonderful bright light. And Jesus Christ was like this penetrating light, fire. Of course, you know, I'm going to be curious and I'm going to look over who God is communicating with. But it's very important for us to be listening to the Holy Spirit. It's very important for us to be praying and reading our Bibles and studying and getting into the Word of God. God is crying out for this land. He's crying out and he's saying, if you're found wanting, then come to Christ, just like I have done. But God has called me out of where I was in darkness to lightness, from the darkness into light. And I know that God is a wonderful God. Thanks to Jesus Christ dying on that cross and shedding his blood for me, I am now able to have a new life in Christ. My old self passes away and I am now compelled by, by Jesus. I'm compelled by the Holy Spirit and the compulsion that I must serve people and help people no matter what. And because God has appointed me as an angel of injustice, I can sit in the back of the church and God has given me the gifts and the abilities to listen to every single person's voice and hear their genuine cries to God. I can hear every single and understand what people are saying. And this is where Christ is calling out Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God, one Godhead, is calling out to his people. Only if you listen and obey the, obey the commands of the Lord your God and obey all the decrees that I'm giving you today, that I'm giving you today, to be a family of God and be a unity of God, one family, one unity in God. And because God has appointed me as an angel of injustice, it is very hard for me. But God has called me to his ministry. God has called me to serve. But of course, we have a battle to win and we have a battle to fight and that is being in God's army. Jesus Christ loves you. He loves me. He loves the sinner. And he wants us to come to him. And if you can hear him in your heart and in your soul and your mind and body that he's calling you, then he's your opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ today. And you may say, how can I do that? 
find your nearest church talk you may have know of a Christian talk to another Christian and say hey I'm curious and I want to know about God because life's so short life is so short and I suppose in some sense that I'm saying that I have seen God but not in the way no man has seen God at any time this declaration is probably made to show the superior superiority of the revelation of Jesus above any previous dispensation it is said therefore that Jesus had imitated the knowledge of God which neither Moses nor any other ancient prophet had possessed. God is invisible, no human eye has seen him. But Christ had the knowledge of God which might be expressed as an apprehension sorry, apprehension by saying that he saw him. He knew him intimately and completely and therefore fitted to make a fully manifestation of him. This passage is not meant to deny that men had witnessed the manifest manifestations of God as when he appeared to Moses the prophet. But it is meant that no one has seen the essence of God or has fully known God. The prophets delivered what they heard and God speak. Jesus what he knew of God as his equal and his understanding of a fully n nature the only begotten son see note John 1 14 this verse shows that John's sense of meaning of the phrase has denoting to to Im imitate and the full knowledge of God in the the bosom of the father this expression is taken from the customs among the orientals and reclining at their mills it denote it denotes the intimacy the friendship affection here it means that Jesus had knowledge of God such as the one friend as of the another knowledge of his character design and nature which no other one possessed and which renders him therefore qualified above all others to make him known so Jesus Christ is qualified above all others Jesus Christ is qualified above all others to make him known make his father known to other people through the apprehension of God not the essence of God but through the apprehension of God no man has seen God at any time Moses and others heard his voice and saw clouds and fire which were symbols of his presence and that's what I'm saying I have seen symbols of God's presence I have seen symbols of God's presence and when I had died and I had gone to the place that I believe was heaven I saw the symbols of God's presence I knew I was in the presence of God I saw those symbols I saw God as this cloud this awesome mighty powerful cloud and apprehension and it was so mighty and it was like his power and the full rough of God that was coming out and giving instructions and discipline towards me but as Moses argued with God I argued with God and who was standing over the over there was Jesus Christ and the apprehension of Jesus Christ was this fire this bright bright piercing light brighter than the Sun and whether they I believe they were communicating and talking to one another and when they had finished God had said with the voice that Cameron I must send you back to this earth but I won't send you back as a, the human form I will send you back as an angel of injustice and you will work, walk this earth because I have called you to serve I have called you to serve people to preach the Word of God and bring salvation to the earth so that way I returned to the earth because I could not stay where I was I was told I had to go back I had to go back to this world so God has called me to serve his people to serve people to love people and just have the compulsion and just do it 
and in my walk of life with God, I do what 